I am so thrilled that New Covent Garden Flower Market have asked me to do a little bit more investigating about what flower folk are doing during the furlough, during lockdown, during this strange COVID situation we've all found ourselves in. And it's really exciting today to be chatting to two of New Covent Garden Market's most colourful characters. They bring a joy to anybody's heart on an early morning as we oh turn dear. the corner and see Athena and Maraid from Rebel Rebel. Ladies, how gorgeous to see you both. Thank you for joining us. Nice to see you. So please, Athena and Maraid, introduce yourselves. For anybody that doesn't know, tell them all about yourselves. You go first. Hi. Okay. Um, I'm Athena from Rebel Rebel. We, are, uh, we have a, a shop and a weddings and events uh, company in the East End in Hackney. And uh, we have been, we've, in fact, it's our 20th anniversary this year. So, uh, yeah, we're, it's all changed very recently, obviously, but um, we're getting on with it. And I'm Maraid, the other half of Rebel Rebel, and um, yeah, doing exactly the same thing, just getting on with life. So how did you two meet? I went to university with Athena's sister um, in Dublin a very, very, very long time ago. And then obviously, everybody in Ireland came to work over here and so did I and then I ended up working in lots of jobs with Athena just by mistake and we became good friends well not by mistake because she actually got me in to work in those jobs <laughs> and then um, and then we decided to leave our work in television and then started up Rebel Rebel. And and like so it's, it's been 20 years that you've had the business and have you always bought your flowers from New Covent Garden Flower Market? Absolutely. Yeah, we, when we very first started, in fact, before we first started, I did a course at, um, with Paula Pryke and uh, really got on with her. And so, so we, we chatted quite a lot. And uh, so I went, it was quite funny, actually. I went to, we, we went to the New Covent Garden Market when we were completely new. And I happened to bump into Paula there at John Austin. And, uh, and and Dennis Edwards spotted me chatting to Paula, and I think just assumed, therefore, that I was a fully fledged florist as opposed to the complete newbie that I actually was. And uh, so, uh, so he sort of took us under his wing, as did his wonderful, wonderful um, friend and colleague Eric. And uh, yeah, we were adopted. It was lovely. Oh, Eric. Yes, I was. Eric was the my he looked after me as well in market. He was such a lovely, lovely guy, wasn't he? Absolutely Wonderful. gorgeous. It's yeah, the, so what I mean, what's your, the thing that strikes you about that first day of walking into the flower market? It was it was a different it was different then. Obviously, it was the old flower market. Well, the old new Covent Garden flower market. Um, and it was quite intimidating because it just you went through those big doors that swung back at you and it, and there was just you know it was really busy that there were more stands then I think when we first went there 20 years ago than there are now um and it was so busy and the color and the smell and then just trying to figure out how to ask people for things was the big thing without looking like an idiot it's that smell of walking into the market is something that I still I still can, it, it just, it, I was October when I went in and it's that, the smell, the abundance of flower. There's something utterly unique about it, isn't there? The funny thing is that I would maintain that I still feel like that, not intimidated so much, but I'm still completely surprised and amazed by it when I walk in and suddenly there's a load of scented Philadelphus outside GB foliage or, 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 or just a, a huge array of something's just turned up that we didn't see the previous week that's very exciting and I am sort of old and foolish enough that I that I forget things very easily so I, I don't know that anemones are going to appear the following week. It's, it's the unknown and the unexpected that you can still turn a corner and see each time that, that keeps it fresh for me. I think that and the characters. 
Yeah. Uh, it used to be the brilliant thing actually about the old market was that all the foliage was outside. And so say when blossoms come in or something and you just turn the corner and there's like a massive, massive, you know, truck full of blossoms sitting outside. It was just, yeah, that kind of thing. It was just so exciting. I mean, it's still- Yeah, and then you go and try and buy it and it turns out it's all for Shane Connolly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And how do you think the industry has changed if it's your 20 years now? Where has it changed? Where to begin? Um, the f what things are making has changed. I mean, I think when we first started, the style was very, was quite, it was still balls of roses. Um, it was much tighter. And then over the years, actually, the whole British flowers, loose, um, just picked look has completely kind of permeated everything. Um, and that's changed. What do you think, Adina? funny because um actually and also it's exactly what happened with us and how we worked because when we first started you know we weren't florists we weren't trained we knew very very little and uh and therefore we were and therefore we were very graphic because we didn't really understand about the sort of natural shapes of things and we tried to make flowers be what we wanted them to be and and it was actually only when we opened our shop in 2004 that we started to use a lot more foliage and, and realized that actually we hadn't, <laughs> we hadn't really touched the stuff. And suddenly here was this thing that guided flower arrangements and made them something completely different. I mean, it, to, the, to the extent that now I think we, both of us quite happily would have only foliage a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so, so our own style actually developed at exactly the moment that things seemed to be changing. Mm -hmm. um and yeah that's our it's still we're, we're still doing that kind of jumping out of the van into the hedgerow from time to time <laughs> being caught stealing people's jasmine over the side of their <gasps> world. i'm noticing Mairead, you've got some really beautiful jasmine tumbling out of that jug full of flowers behind you did that come from someone else's wall no <laughs> i came from my garden <laughs> And you're both, your style is so joyous and so happy. Both your personal style, the way you dress, the way you bear, carry yourself, and also the style of flowers that you create are very uplifting and joyous. I love your social media feed is always, uh, it makes me smile. You get great joy from it. And also you're still really lighthearted and fun about it all. Do you feel that that's something that is a has become your brand? We, I'm, I'm not, I mean, we, we are often asked what, you know, what's what's uh, what's our favourite kind of flower range, or what, what are our favourite flowers? What do we, and and actually, I think colour. We sort of never have wanted to conform to what should be with colours, and and and. And that's developed too, actually, you know, d discovering that, that having a load of colours together that, that pr might make some people react badly or, um, sorry, that sounds like nonsense, but uh, colour is our thing. And I think that's very noticeable from our Instagram. We like, we love to clash. We also like all those real in-betweeny colours, you know, the, the blushes and the, uh, all those colours that you probably couldn't ever say what the colour is, which is actually, again, what's so fantastic about flowers is that naturally they come up with colours that don't exist anywhere else. What, a bit like Marks and Spencer? <laughs> um, in a good way, in a good <laughs> way, you know, like, like, like that bluey black in the centre of an anemone, or or just astonishing, astonishing colours that again fit together. That in a, in a, in one single petal in a in a dahlia, you can spot several different colours. It's yeah, inspirational. And flowers are fun. I mean, most people, most florists are actually nice people. I think you don't you very rarely meet evil florists, in my experience. <laughs> Because it's, you know, it's a joyous thing to do and it, it, and it attracts people who are joyful and fun, I think. 
Yeah. I think we're very lucky that we work with such beautiful raw materials and they become our inspiration. I'm loving the passion you both have for your plant material um, is evident from talking to you. But also I know from watching, if I see a trolley go past, quite often I'll know it's yours in market because it's such <laughs> a wonderful, explosive assortment of of colour and lots of wonderful foliage. And you really are, the pair of you are hugely inspired by and by a lot of British and seasonal produce. Yes, absolutely. Often far too much, quite frankly. <laughs> that's, I'll tell you, that's one thing about not being able to go to the flower market, having to order stuff does reduce the cost somewhat because Maid and I are completely incapable of going into the market and buying only what we have on our list. And what, but why do you bother going to the market then? What is the draw for you going if you could do it all online? Well, you can't, exactly. you can't really do it all online because you can't, A, it's just, you get inspiration from the market because you, it changes all the time. And you go, every time you go in there, um, there's new things. And, and also seeing the things together. It's all very well buying things online you don't actually see them next to something else. You don't get the idea of how this foliage might work with the flower. So actually the market's really important for that. Um, and, and just the British stuff. I mean, you, uh, you can buy the British stuff obviously online, but the, the, the foliage is so important. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, and also you're inspired by other people. Like when we see Shane Conley's trolley go past, and we get inspired by his or yours or what, you know, or you see, um, um, uh, oh my God, my brain's gone completely dead. Um, so who's that lovely um, Korean girl? Um, oh, Frida. Frida. You see, Frida Kim. Frida's gathered up three things together and you go, oh my God, how has she put those three things together? They're so perfect. And then you can go off and steal her idea. <laughs> Not like really. Like, like um, Bloomfield doing their shelf of the week, which we've never had, I have to we say. have? Or what, in the, have on, on Instagram? Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> we'll have to see about that. <laughs> and for, you were involved in the very inaugural British Flowers Week. You did the most exquisite creations that still live on in my mind. The photographs of you with your delphinium headdress and sheaves of the most wonderful blue delphinium flowers. Were you able to choose what you use? Would that have been your bloom of choice? I can't, I think we wanted to We were given, I think we were, as a group, we were given sort of five and we had to choose which one we wanted, I think. Yeah, Isn't I think we worked? Worked. Well, somebody we somebody else nabbed what we wanted. But I mean, not that we didn't want delphinium, so they are so, um, there's so many things you can do with them, from taking little individual flowers to doing, um, I noticed you haven't mentioned my flower train. Yes, your flower train. <laughs> you were the first to be wearing flowers, really, you two, weren't you? <laughs> do love to do idiotic things and um, having having your bouquet as your as your bustle hasn't actually um, had a lot of takers. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you most missing about lockdown at the moment? Wow. I'll tell you what I'm not missing actually is the fact that for once in my life I've been gardening. And I mean, I have a garden. It's been a it's been a, a, a junkyard for Rebel Rebels cast off bits and pieces and a, basically a, a not very impressive thing. And I have spent the last two and a half months really, really gardening. And it's been so exciting and it looks great. And uh, apart from the fact that I have planted loads of seeds and put the little tags on them with what turned out to be not permanent marker. So I have absolutely no idea <laughs> what I've grown. And Maraid, what have you been missing? What have I been missing? Um, I've been missing the pub. Uh, just, just, I mean, summertime, I live in Chiswick. So, you know, you just go down by the river and sit outside the pub. And that's, you know, that's life. <laughs> I can't do that. So I really, really, really miss that. But. I mean, we miss going to Italy is the worst thing we've missed because we've got um, 
we've got a place out there and we've been growing things out there. And also we were supposed to have our um, 20th birthday party this year in Italy and that's been cancelled. So that was a, that's a horrible thing. That is a horrible thing. That's such a shame. So 20 years ago, your, what would have been, can you remember what your first orders were that were going out? Um, we were only doing events then. Mm -hmm. um, we set up, we set up in a tiny basement office and, and, uh, and we were just giving it a go because we could and it was, it was worth it, but we had no confidence that anything would come of it whatsoever actually and uh so our early early things were you know for friends offices we had worked in television so we had lots of friends who were still working in television who gave us jobs quite quickly actually and uh, i do remember our very first big 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 job was um for the london restaurant awards in the grosvenor house hotel uh where we made frankly hideous table centres but 96 of them I mean this is for two people who had no idea about anything Simon and uh, we did this using our friends and family in my back garden 96 of them put them all in great big cardboard boxes overnight so that we could take them in the morning and then discovered that it poured with rain that night and discovered in the morning that the snails had arrived and so we spent the afternoon at the Grosvenor house with my mum sitting at a table doing snail inspection on every single one of those table <laughs> centres. <laughs> and we used kumquats, can you believe, in our arrangements, um, which we ran out of quite swiftly and had to send my dad around London, particularly to Selfridge's food hall, <laughs> buying very expensive kumquats. <laughs> those are my memories. <laughs> I think our, our very first thing we ever did was a photo shoot for Julian Clary. Yeah. For the, for the Telegraph magazine, bizarrely. How wonderful. And why are you called Rebel Rebel? Um, well, now we like to think it's because we um, knew that David Bowie was the best person in the world. But at the time, it was because we did like David Bowie, but also because there were two of us and we both had red hair at the time and we thought we wanted to kind of we were thinking red and rebel red rebel and then rebel rebel just kind of came out of that i think you still got a piece of paper athena with all the possible names on i do i do yeah and red red was one of them but it was it was such a it was such a fortuitous thing i mean we we, we literally decided this over lunch with my dad because he said what are you going to call yourselves and we hadn't even thought about it so we just came up with this list and made a decision. And actually having a name that isn't anything to do with flowers is, is quite useful, actually. I think um, very sensible. And yeah. People can sing is very useful because you hear people going past and just singing Rebel Rebel as they pass. It's a brilliant in fact, sitting in a traffic jam, at, sitting in a traffic jam at Smithfield, going through Smithfield's meat market at four o'clock in the morning um, with our friend Graham Murta. I remember sitting there stock still because obviously at four o'clock in the morning, Smithfield's very busy. And, uh, and there was a very drunk man holding onto a lamppost and he sang the whole of Rebel Rebel while we were sitting there. Brilliant. Was it in the days before a video phone? Sadly, yes. Oh. <laughs> so whilst lockdown is happening are you still keeping the early hours that those of us who frequent new covent garden flower market do or are you treating yourselves to the odd little lion mm, definitely absolutely yeah this very morning i was still in bed at 10 to 9 i think <laughs> and do you get that slightly panicked feeling when you look at the clock at 10 to 9 and think oh, for i sort of think why am i in bed i should be up and there's, there's so much i should be doing well, the nice thing is actually that we are, we are, because Maureen and I are actually doing, delivering flowers twice a week, we, three days of the week, we do have to get up relatively early, nothing like the normal, but, but um, relatively it's, early. It's so. quite painful now though. I, yeah. I don't enjoy it at all. I don't know how we're going to get back to normal. I never enjoyed it. And so you are doing deliveries. So, um, Customers can order flowers for you for, is it click and collect and non-contact delivery? 
We yeah, non-contact delivery is what we've been doing. So yeah. we, we, we've, um, everyone else is furloughed, so it's just me and Maraid. And uh, so we're going absolutely back to basics and, and uh, making bouquets ourselves, which I, I must say I'm thoroughly enjoying. It's a, it's a, it's a good feeling. We, we've been buying um, flowers through New Covent Garden, you know, the, the, the people who've managed to somehow find a way. And uh, we've been going down to um, Blooming Green in Kent and also where one of our um, freelancers is currently working and uh, or living and um, and also to Wolves Lane in Tottenham. So getting some really lovely British stuff as well. And uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's good fun. And Maraid, what is it that you love the most about British flowers? Um... I think it's what, when they're in season, they're the best. So, you know, sweet British sweet peas are the best sweet peas. Um, the just as it comes through, it's just the strongest and and most lovely. Go going seeing those boxes at um, Pratley's of opening up um, of snapdragons and just smelling that bubblegum scent when you open the box and the colours that are just that, that, that kind of ready orange and the um, I don't know, I don't really know where to begin I mean, that we, actually we were looking for pictures to kind of illustrate British Flowers Week and I, I find and so I was looking through June and I found a picture from about a couple of years ago in June and we bought flowers for something, I can't remember what it was and we actually literally piled them up in a pile on the ground and it was just this like sort of sandwich of the most incredible things and yeah that's why I love I'm not, I'm not really explaining myself very well I think it's just because when they're at their best they're the absolute best you can get and also they're, they're there they're there at the times they're meant to be there they're completely seasonal so so they'll come and then they'll go in a flash and sometimes they'll last three weeks because the weather has suited them and sometimes they'll last just you'll just see them once that the, the arrival of flowers that you haven't seen before, you've never seen cut before, like um, Mexican sunflowers that appeared, which I just absolutely love. And uh, oh, I don't know, all those zinnias, and again, those, those indescribable colours that somehow Saul suddenly finds that he's got an extra bucket tucked away somewhere. Mm. And if you were, if I made you choose a flower, what would you choose, Athena? I've always said no to this question. Um, what do I choose? I wonder. You know, I find that an actually impossible question. I suppose, I suppose, you know, the blackest dahlia I, or some of those withy pits, which I'm mm. growing a few of, um, some of those incredible withy pits are hard to beat. Um, and again, those Mexican sunflowers, the, the luminous orange of those Mexican sunflowers, I love. But I mean, every week I could say a different flower would be my favourite flower. And Maraid, the same question for you, your flower of choice? Oh God, it's so, it's ridiculous. You can't ask a florist that question. It's impossible. Because also I've got a little brain that I literally forget every year what's coming in until it appears and then go, oh, I'd forgotten all about that. Um, but I suppose, I mean, peonies, they're just so great when they're great. Um, but maybe not the best. I, th I think I like daffodils, bizarrely. Just because they're so, they just do what they say on the tin, really. <laughs> and they're almost the sort of the herald of the start of the, the season, mm. as it were, of the arrival of British flowers, is when you see those beautiful heavy boxes on Prattleys that you know you lift the lid and they're either the lovely sheath buds or they're the ones that they picked a bit later and they just are all starting to to show their colours and sort of golden ducket and all of that lot. Exactly, exactly. All the different, there's so many different varieties and they're so beautiful. Yeah. But then again, we haven't mentioned hellebores, <laughs> lily of the valley, lily of the valley. This year I had a, a, a frankly hideous birthday, but I did have a very nice surprise dinner. And um, Maraid organised to have lily of the valley on the tables, amongst many other glorious flowers. And yeah, that smell is my favourite smell. Yeah, it's an incredible smell. And can I also put a vote in for crown imperials for fritillaria oh. as well? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although we did for our opening of the um, <laughs> Mayor Street Market, 
<laughs> our shop in Main Street Market, um, we hung orange crown imperial, orange and yellow crown imperials from the, oh no, it was only, it was only yellow actually, I think, mm, yeah. um, from the ceiling. Um, so loads and loads and loads of them. And I think quite a lot of people thought that we'd been smoking rather a lot of weed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> either, the, either the dope shop had opened or the foxes had arrived. <laughs> <laughs> the smell is a bit similar, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Now, New Covent Garden Market, we all know and love. It's such an institution. Um, and it seems like it's quite a good gossip shop as well. Um, who are your favourite characters in the market? Wow. John Carter. <laughs> um, immediately springs to mind. John Carter's shoes. John Carter's shoes. Actually. How does John stay so pristine and so immaculate the entire time? I mean, I'm like <laughs> pig pen from Peanuts. When I walk around, there's a sort of cloud of filth attached to me. And if I wear a pair, pale pair of trousers, they're dirty before I've even got in the car, never mind get out of the car. <laughs> but he's pristine. He is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's loads. And obviously there's loads of people. I mean, Dennis is a total marvel and a total marvel because he does do that thing of having a little bucket of roses that somebody's brought in from their garden or, you know, those sorts of things. Well, you know, how are you going to get that online? Or, or somebody who's cut down the mimosa tree mm. and uh, suddenly <laughs> there's all this wonderful mimosa. So um, he's pretty fabulous. And um, John takes the relentless piss out of me at Bloomfield mm. on a daily basis sort of enjoyable um obviously for british flowers soul is very very important to all our lives <laughs> yes absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, wonder, I hope he's okay because it must be he must be having a difficult time i don't think they've been trading at all have they or have they been trading from nothing at the moment i mean i'm trying we're hoping to have a zoom interview with saul um just because i think it would be really interesting yeah. to get his take um and also the 15th of June is exciting because it's not only the start of British Flowers Week, but it is also the opening of New Covent Garden Flower Market again. Yeah. And it's going to be different because it will be socially distanced. There will be a one way system operating. But I can't wait to get back there. What's going to be the first thing that you will do when you get back there? Maraid? Um, well, go straight to Pratley's, I expect. Um, and have a uh, uh, and zest actually because they're getting in all their stuff from um, Roseby, I think. Just see all the British flowers. Actually, really, really, really excited by that. Um, that's that's where I'll be going. And Athena. Well, similarly, I mean, at this time of year, you have to because otherwise you miss everything. Yeah, you've, you've got, got to get there first. Very actually, early. there'll be a bun fight. My God. Yeah, it will <laughs> be. Like the dawn. It will and foliage, be. of course. Yeah, the foliage. The foliage, I'm, I think that's, that, that's one of the things that I miss when I'm overseas more than anything. You can get the flowers-ish, but the, the, the assortment of foliage that we get in the UK is uniquely magic, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, just, it's astonishing. And, uh, you know, we, we were talking just earlier about, Mairead and I, about, um, you know, the, the, that geranium that comes in and the purple basil. And I mean, the scent, my God, it's incredible. Yeah, the fragrance of the scented pelagonium, I think, is one of the, it's one of my most mm. enjoyed things. When you turn the corner and there's a bucket of that. Yeah. Mm. Porters. And also, if you turn the corner at GB, there'll be a lovely sheaf of lavender. Those are the things that, that yeah. make me get up in the morning and, and want to go to New Covent Garden Market. Exactly. Yes. I mean, I, I was saying earlier that I never like getting out of bed in the morning, and that is absolutely true. But the minute I am driving over Waterloo Bridge and it's dawn and the, and the river's really still, and you are looking forward to what you're going to see when those doors open. Uh, yeah, that also nothing beats that. It is, we're very lucky, I think, to have it. I mean, for me, my business would be so much less. It would be my satisfaction from what I do would be so diminished if I didn't have the joy of being able to 
go to the market to see the flowers to see the foliage to meet the other characters for me it, it's just such a wonderfully inspirational place on so many levels completely yeah. completely well, it's been fabulous chatting to you both. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I know that everybody at New Covent Garden Flower Market will be as excited as I am to hopefully bump into you both very soon, preferably when I've got to that pile of lovely scented pelagonium before you two. <laughs> um, so there'll be arm wrestling in the car park to get through the doors, I think, on the 15th of June. But thank you both very, very much. I hope to see you soon in market. And until then, keep safe. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Nice Take to talk care. to you. Nice to talk to you. Bye. Bye. Well, that was wonderful. What a great opportunity to chat and find out what the brilliant Athena and Maraid were up to at Rebel Rebel. Thank you all for joining me and I hope that we will see you again very soon. Till then, keep safe. Bye.